So welcome to the EcoSec Summit with Rana Gold and Alan Stradin. But I'm speaking to the one and only eco-vegan girl, Whitney Lordson. Hi, Whitney, and welcome to the EcoSec Hi. Summit. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So why don't you begin by telling us a little bit about yourself? I'm a journalist who does mainly video content on health and sustainability. So kind of inspiring and educating people on how they can live um, lives where they eat better food, um, just achieve overall wellness, and do things that are better for the planet. I've been following your, your YouTube channel and your blog. You've got a great little site going, and I absolutely love your message about eco-veganism. I have a whole love section, oh, wow. which uh, has information on relationships, uh, pregnancy, raising children, and uh, having companion animals, uh, and all the different ways that eating healthy and being vegan and eco-friendly uh, interact with those aspects of our lives. I've been looking at one of your, your videos where you were speaking about body dysmorphic disorder. You were talking about women's body image and how they feel about themselves and how that relates to, to food, I guess. It's a huge issue and it's something that you know I've dealt with, but I've seen pretty much every woman around me deal with. Food uh, and just being healthy in general has such an impact on our bodies, of course, but also on our minds. And um, one of the number one questions I get through my website is about weight loss right. and I'm always very cautious to explain that this is about health, this isn't about just looking good. You know, So many people just want to lose weight to look good and they do it in really unhealthy ways, really unnatural ways and things that don't last long term because most people are looking for a quick fix and they don't realize that weight loss can take time trying to explain to people that it's about health first. So getting healthy and then letting, you know, weight loss may come as a result. But um, fortunately, when you, when you eat healthy, it's not only your weight that can benefit from it, but it can also benefit your hair and your skin and, and, and even just your whole attitude, which is a huge part of what makes people attractive is really just how they act around other people. Yeah, when, I, when I saw your video, um the one where you showed your transformation over a number mm -hmm. of years. Uh, what, what seems to stick out for me is definitely a, a essence of sustainability in your lifestyle. You know, you've managed to uh, find something that really works for you. When I did go vegetarian, I did lose a lot of weight pretty rapidly, and that was a motivating factor for me, but it wasn't the only reason I was doing it. And over the years, I realized all the things that I just told you, which were, it was more about health, because being vegetarian or vegan is not necessarily healthy and is not necessarily going to lead to weight loss. You have to know how your body reacts to certain foods, and you have to stay active as well. And the way that you use the activist through yoga, I, I assume? I, it changes a lot. I, lo I love yoga, um, but I go through phases, you know, <laughs> it's, it's time consuming. So, you know, recently I haven't been able to do it. So I, I walk a lot. I mean, walking is always the, the biggest thing for me, just, you know, or taking the stairs whenever I can, because that's something you can do every day, whether you intend to or not. Instead of driving somewhere, you walk there. Instead of taking the elevator, you take the stairs. And uh, I find even just daily changes like that can make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's, again, that is also something that I, I quite liked your, as part of your message is the simple things that, that one can do. One of our, our other interviewers, um, they brought up a, a, a little catchphrase, vegan is the new Viagra. Erectile dysfunction disorder is, is, is hugely related to circulation in the body. Yeah. and um, just health in general. So if your body isn't getting the right nutrients and the right, just right food in general, if it's bogged down by junk food, it's going to affect everything, including things like erections for men um, and probably even you know, sexual functions for women. And mm. that's where that phrase really came out of. I think it also has another thing. You know, we think of Viagra as... as not only for men, but it also has this idea of getting people excited and enjoying sex, right? So I find that when you're healthy, you're also happier, you have more vitality. So mm -hmm. you're going and you're going to, 
you know, again, coming back to being active, if you're, if you're spending a lot of time focusing on your body with, with food and with um, any sort of activity or exercise, everything's going to benefit that, including sex. So mm-hmm. you're going to just, you're going to want to have it more often, but it's also going to just probably work better because your body's working better. In one of the old videos as well, you mentioned how sugar, it gives you that little bit of energy, but it doesn't really sustain your energy levels. And you had some tips that, that, uh, of, of other products that you, that you could suggest. Yeah, you know, I've been spending a lot of time on sugar over, over the past year or so, and um, it's a very confusing topic because, you know, sugar could be so many different things or so many different forms of sugar and each form reacts in our body differently and some things are technically sugar, some things are unrefined, refined, some things taste sweet but they're, they're not a sugar. So it's, it's something that I'm still exploring. Um, but in general, I always advise that people stay away from refined sugars and also be very cautious about particular unrefined sugars because even the, the, the sweetener alternatives like agave, for example, that are promoted as being healthy, they actually still have very similar effects in our body that refined sugars do. People who have diabetes obviously have different reactions to sweeteners and things like that. So it's, it's, it's really important for people to be educated and, and pay attention to how it makes them feel. And the more I've I've taken away refined sugars and really, you know, limited and kept other things in moderation, the more I can actually feel the way it affects my body. And I remember, you know, a couple of years ago, I would just have sugar and it felt, made me feel, feel good, right? And I was, yeah. wanted to eat it all the time, but I didn't realize any of the negative feelings I was having because I wasn't paying attention to them. I didn't know how to look out for them. I feel like my whole head just uh, feels off. I feel uncomfortable, like... Sometimes I get like itchy skin from sugar. Sometimes I, you know, I'll have yeah those highs and lows of it. It's it's really interesting. But if I have natural sugars like fruit or especially dates, dates are one of my favorite sweets. They're super sweet, but they're fruit, so it's your body take responds to it completely different because it's in its whole form. Mm. It's got all of its nutrients and it's raw, whereas opposed to you know, a lot of other sugars out there that are just way over processed and your body doesn't even recognize, so it doesn't know what to do with it. The other thing that I've explored is, is stevia and things like xylitol that are um, sweet but not technically sugars, and those are really great alternatives for people that have a really hard time, you know, whether it's diabetes or, or a candida issues. Um, they're just wonderful, and most research I've, I've read on it says that they're perfectly safe, and there's really no, no problems with, with having them. I mean, chocolate releases oxytocin, gives you that same feel-good feeling that uh, good sex can bring. So how does organic chocolate compare? Well, you know, there's so many different types of chocolate, too. Well, I mean, really, there's only one type of cacao, right? That's where it all originates from. But um, when, when you're shopping, there's so many different choices, but the average person, especially the average American, I would say, um, they think of chocolate, they think of milk chocolate, and they think of Hershey's chocolate or Nestle's or something. And these are like super low quality chocolate that are loaded with sugar and, you know, milk and preservatives or additives and all sorts of weird things. I like to use raw cacao in powder or, you know, they're called nibs or, or chips a lot. And I make my own chocolates with it. And it's a completely different experience. It's, it's much stronger. And um, it, it gives you kind of a, a different feeling because your body's reacting more to the chocolate than it is to the sugar. Okay, okay. So I think most people get the sugar highs from chocolate. Yeah. They don't, they're not really experiencing what real chocolate does to their body. Um, and in terms of organic, you know, organic is always important, but the biggest thing that's important with chocolate is, is, is making sure that it's fair trade okay. because um, there's a lot of big issues happening with chocolate and, and the people that are making it. There are documentaries on this exploring the chocolate industry and, and all the things it's doing to people and the environment that are really bad.
Mm. So I, you know, recommend getting the purest chocolate you can from the most reputable conscious companies out there. When we look at Eco6 and, and keeping our love life sustainable, one of the key components is looking at pl the, the plastic that our sex toys are made of. But you, yes. brought up, yeah, but you brought up a very interesting thing in one of your videos about the plastic containers that we keep our food in. Mm -hmm. mm. Can, you, can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I, you know, over the years I've just learned so much about plastic and it's really a, a huge issue that is slowly being addressed. You know, we're slowly getting rid of plastic bags and we're slowly getting rid of uh, um, I guess plastic bottles, although that's a huge, you know, problem that companies don't want to give up. Um, and then, you know, it's plastic food containers, plastic packaging around all of our products and things like that. And, you know, I recycle pretty much everything, but the average person doesn't. They throw it in their trash. So first of all, it's a huge issue because plastic ends up in landfills and, you know, whether it's plastic packaging or a plastic, you know, sex toy or something, that most people just throw it in the trash. They, then it ends up in the landfills and it sits there. It, um, it does, it takes a very long time, if ever, for it to biodegrade. And um, it also releases toxins. This is a huge toxic process that goes into making plastic. So for health reasons, too, um, it's, it's not a great idea to be putting that near your mouth or, you know, any other part of your body. So yeah. I work really hard to avoid it at all costs. Um, and it's, it's, it's a huge challenge too. Plastic is cheap and it's, you can sell, you know, people go into a, a, a you know, sex shop or something and they want a toy. They don't have a lot of money. You can get all these products for like $20 or something. And you know, not only do they fall apart and they're poorly made, but who knows what chemicals are on them, not, let alone plastic. I mean, the things that just go into making products in general. Yeah. So, you know, for me, for things like that, like invest in, you know, don't buy something for $20. Wait till you have enough money to buy, you know, a $100 thing that's going to last you a really long time. The companies that make that make the better products are are just going to be better value for your money anyway. So you might as well do it because it's healthier and makes more financial sense. Somebody sent in something about underwire bras. When you constrict the circulation around that area of the breast, some people think that that might be a cause for breast cancer. Oh wow. Um, and I've, I've heard that many times about circulation, you know, that's an area of a body that women don't move that much, right, unless they're naturally walking or something, but people even recommend that women kind of massage their breasts on a regular basis um, or have someone else do it for them, <laughs> add, add it into as part of your sexual experience, but um, just to get more circulation in there and get more just movement, uh, because otherwise it's just a lot of basically fat sitting there that's that's hanging off your body and and not serving much of a purpose unless you have a child you know baby yeah. but um and i think if you think about it with bras they're constricting it women are wearing bras for at least 12 hours out of the day yeah. every single day so it's important to kind of give yourself a little bit more freedom yeah i, I think uh that we take a lot of these things for granted. It's just been around for so long that we don't give it a second thought. Well, thank you very much for, again for, for chatting with us tonight. Uh, is there anything, any final thing that you'd like to leave us with? You know, for me, the biggest message I, I want to give is that I think that people just need to look at, at things as being a lot simpler than they are. And not putting too much pressure on themselves. I think that's what detracts people from, from becoming healthier or living more eco-friendly lives is that they already have too much stress in their life. So it, they would rather go to an inexpensive place and get food that with lots of salt and sugar and oil on it because it makes them feel good and then take some diet pills and try to lose weight or throw things out instead of recycling them and buy the, the convenient stuff regardless of whether it's it's made with bad ingredients and processes and all of that. So it's it just seems too hard. And for me, it's all about just finding the simplest way to do it and making it fun and not putting pressure on it. You know, there's no hurry. You do need to 
take action fast for the planet, but we also, if we rush ourselves, we're just going to fall off the wagon, as one would say, and then have to start all over again. So it's usually more effective to just take your time and do it at, at your own pace. This, can, I guess, could apply to sexuality as well, too. Is It's just like there's so much pressure on people when it comes to sex. <laughs> and so for me, it's all about having a healthier mindset and not worry about what other people are doing and not worry about, you know, doing things perfectly or, or, or any of that. It's, it's doing it right and doing it with what feels right to you. Mm-hmm. That, those are the key things, you know, and, and once, you, once you achieve that happiness, everything else just keeps getting better and better, including sex. <laughs> <laughs> right.